वाओ मेरे साथ देखो कौन है वाओ आई डोंट साउंड लाइक दैट आई डोंट साउंड लाइक दैट वाओ 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 What's good, you guys? Welcome to another episode of the Ranveer Show. What's really weird for me on a personal level is that there's few people in the Hindi film industry who I really idolize. One of them is Priyanka Chopra, and another big idol of mine is Saif Ali Khan. So during this particular podcast, I was actually kind of nervous, and that led me to saying "man, man, man" after every sentence. It was like one of those filler things you do to dumb down your nervousness. And also, this happened. You know, you get taught like these guys at Eton and Winchester. And- A head intern at BBI Sir Akshat Tiwari actually collapsed on Saif Ali Khan in the middle of the podcast so we had to actually start the podcast again so pardon me if I'm coming off as a little bit nervous through it I was trying to get the best possible content for you guys because this man is the most intellectual guy in Bollywood and that's not something that a lot of people know he's one of the most well read guys he reads a lot about history and he's extremely passionate about the projects he takes up Enjoy this podcast. Enrich yourself through the information that Saif Ali Khan has provided to you guys. We cover topics related to reading, to learning, to even finance, and obviously things related to Bollywood, like competition, like ambitions, like career goals, and the evolution of India. Enjoy the episode. I will see you later. <laughs> So when I was growing up a lot of people used to call me chota saif and I'm with bada saif today wow. saif ali khan <laughs> nice having you yeah on. thanks <laughs> nice having you on the ranveer show man okay uh, i, I want i want to start off this chat by telling you uh, something like it's a message from the entire generation okay. so we grew up watching you man okay and primarily the guys especially we've learned yeah. three important things from you yes the first is seeing dil jata hai hum tum and kalona ho in okay. that phase we learned how to be charming so we've used all your tricks that you've used on screen with a lot of the girls we want to did you get anywhere of course oh wow that's nice <laughs> uh, the second thing i've learned from you is watching you in that omkar phase when you used yeah. to come on chat shows used to host award shows yeah. we learned class from you we learned Ooh. how to dress and god you're you. embarrassing me thank you very <laughs> very kind dear and the third thing is a more human thing Ji. um we learned resilience from you like seeing sacred games happen yeah. and all that i want i want to ask you what's your mental space like right now at this age you're about to turn like 50 yes about to turn 50 next next year i'll be 50 yeah. in august so 49 i don't know i mean sometimes you feel you know that you've lived more uh, more than half your life so um i wake up sometimes in the morning thinking what exactly do i want how do i want to live the rest of my uh existence does it do i want to be on a film set all the time or do i want to be on holiday more how do i you know um want to spend this time and i mean the answers i come up with are usually family and friends based but and a, a nice mix of work as well yeah. but i think confronting mortality and thinking about um thinking about pretty serious things like uh reading uh, yeah reading is is part of everything i mean reading also gives me great great happiness are you in a good mental space right now yeah i'd say i am yeah i'm okay. i mean i'm quite satisfied and and realistic and happy with I'm happy with, I mean I mean you know I'm not greedy but I'm always looking to do slightly better work. I think I'm a slow learner and I'm still learning and I'm still kind of getting better at at acting yeah. and at life. So <laughs> uh you know the better you get at, at these things the the kind of more you enjoy it. it. So so I am enjoying it. Got it. Yeah. Are you are you consciously picking like edgy stuff like we've seen your kind of content get slightly darker slightly uh, edgy or You know I don't know I think I I probably should be a bit more commercial <laughs> <laughs> but but we we love I, this avatar I don't know I kind of look at some of the stuff that's really commercial hmm. and I feel like I really don't even want to watch it so, <laughs> so I don't know I don't mean to be judgy on that but um I think there's a middle ground I'd like to be a little more commercial I'd like I don't want to do films that that people don't want to watch yeah. you know but but i think there's a common ground i mean i'd love to do a film like you know i think that gully boy zone yeah. kind like of place is intellectual as well as commercial well not too intellectual even but just little artistic Got it. and uh nice looking and and you know a, a good film that moves you yeah. but but that isn't kind of um demented <laughs> hopefully yeah <laughs> so if someone studies your career mm. they notice that you've been so patient with like picking your roles like all your roles have like this little bit of you know they have a little bit of bite at least that's what i feel man. yeah uh, especially in that phase where we were growing up you were kind of 
consciously remodeling yourself in every phase that's what i felt well i think it's balance you know you've got to kind of, it depends on your outlook and what you want in life and i mean who knows where our influences are from and yeah. what drives us and what we think is beautiful i mean these are all constructs that kind of are created in your childhood with your experiences so there are certain films that i've grown up with there are certain things that i've uh, watched and i like like i mean if you ask talk about lal kaptan i mean i wouldn't have done it if i hadn't grown up watching um Clint Eastwood and if i didn't understand the relevance of wearing like a red east india company jacket or riding a horse in the desert or i mean these are things that you know an actor with my outlook yeah. would kind of give his eye teeth to kind of do you know but uh someone else might see it totally differently and 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 would rather do um you know um uh, houseful for example yeah. you know which is great Man, that, I mean that that diversity is what makes the industry interesting. Yeah, for sure. But at this stage, I think with something like Lal Kaptan, it's looking crazy. Yeah. Uh, my question to you is, uh, how close is this film to your heart? Because it's coming after something wow. like Sacred Games. Are well, you, you know, it's really close to my heart. It's been like a passion project. It was like so hard. Why is it As, a passion project? Well. Um, well, for, first of all, it's like a it's a western. The kind of film yeah. it is. I mean, when I say western, it's not like a copy of a guy in a hat. It's a <laughs> Indian story. It's like an Indian superhero. Like yeah. what would be an Indian superhero? Krish. A Naga Sadhu. Yeah, Krish is also <laughs> he's very great and you know uh, amazing. But um, he's kind of like a, a mix of a lot of western superheroes. Yeah. Uh, whereas this guy. Uh, is Indian at his core. Is Indian. I mean, first of all, he's not really supernatural, even though he kind of <laughs> looks it. I mean, you can't jump over yeah. buildings and stuff. But he's a swordsman. Hmm. And um, if you've seen those Japanese, so there's Japanese kind of influence oh. in terms of samurai influence and the fighting and stuff like this. The fact that he's a sadhu, um, the fact that he's this mix of the East India Company, the time that this film is set in hmm. is a fascinating time. It's like yeah. wilder than the Wild West, yeah. you know. Like without being boring, about, I mean, the Mughal Empire is collapsing. There's little pockets of power yeah. that are popped up everywhere all over India. It's like the Badlands. You can't ride a horse from one town to another without getting attacked by bandits or yeah. something. And in the middle of all, so it's like the Wild West, yeah. but it's India. So we drive like four or five hours to find the most rugged landscape we can find. We, like, <laughs> we take this really badass film crew and go out there and make this movie. So, I mean, you need to be a little crazy. Yeah, uh, but it's to, looking badass. It's looking crazy. It man. is. It's beautiful. And it's so well shot. And considering the budget we had to actually pull this thing off. I mean, I whatever happens to this at the box office, I will like be proud forever that, yeah. you know, I, I was on this film. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, you're deep into history. And I think that's a big reason this film is kind of close to your heart. Yeah. So my question know, to you yeah. is like, of all the history you've read, and I know yeah. that you read a lot. Yeah. What's like three lessons that have stayed with you and changed you a little bit as a person? Three lessons from history. Well, one thing is I think men learn nothing. Thing from history, except that men learn nothing from history. <laughs> um, that, you know, it kind of repeats itself for sure. Yeah. If you, and especially if you're not aware of it. Um, lessons from history. I mean, so many things. Like, I mean, the, you know, that life has a uh, usually has a good patch um, and bad patches, and uh, you know, things change, but they don't always. Um, in the sense that it's important to recognize what the good times are because when you look at a person's history you say mm. ah these seven years were the best years of his life now yeah. if only you could recognize that while it's happening can i just um, tell you something can yeah. i interrupt you a little bit man please um i i sincerely believe that the best phase of your career yeah. is about to come because, i hope so yes i feel our entire generation yeah. is like really looks up to you looks yeah. up to your class looks up to How your smarts kind, yeah. and the kind of content you're selecting yeah. man this is where it's at for like an entire well, please, generation please go and see the movie <laughs> <laughs> so the we will, we will. yeah but go on i'm sorry no, no that's it so i mean what else does one learn from history i mean the thing i love about history okay is that there are all these people like there's things that are lost in time you know like the library of alexandria like all of aristotle's books i mean the only thing surviving are his notes you yeah. know um so there's all these great people have been lost but we get a chance to kind of meet these people in history you know you can meet like you can like almost have a conversation with you know, Plato and by Alexander the, the Great by reading the books. So, I mean, I, I feel, I, I remember my, my dad, I said to him once, I said, you're all right, because he was living alone. Uh, he was, for, my mom was away or something in Delhi. And um, he said, yeah, I've got my books, I'm fine. So yeah. I understand that now. Books and friends, yeah. you know, and you're never alone. Yeah, so I want to ask you, how are you this classy? Is there like, can you give me some core rules of ah, being classy? No, look, uh, I... I think first of all you have to be unaware of that sort of thing and 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 <laughs> low be, key. yeah low key and kind of uh 
it's, I think it's to do with what we've seen as kids and l- respect, you know? Yeah. Like uh, this country is so, un- there's so much unfairness. Hmm. The people that work for us, the people that drive our cars and stuff like, I mean, I, it just constantly kind of bothers me and I'm aware that the least we can do is be kind of polite about things to, to everyone. Yeah. Um, and, and I think my dad was like an ultimate kind. So I, you get a lot of this from, from your father if you respect him. Some people don't, and they join the Taliban. But um, yeah, I think, you know, it's not, it's not actually a joke. Yeah, yeah they don't. I mean, yeah. some people don't respect yeah. their fathers. They're yeah. like, okay, I'm going to join a street gang. Yeah. yeah. Um, but some people do respect their fathers, and and um, I think. Do you think respect is the core of class? Yeah, for yourself, for life, kind of. I mean, most classy people. Yeah. Um, have, have respect. So, and what about charm? <laughs> I don't know. What are, I, what are, I think what all this has taken years, you know. I don't know. You weren't always know. this charming? No, I used to really try. Okay. There was this, I remember being a kid and, and a lot of girls telling me in Delhi that, uh, yeah, you're like my brother. <laughs> and I used to be really upset. And then one summer, I think it just changed. I, don't know, I think it's growing up. I don't know what it is. Um, I just know the, a bad thing is to be pretentious. I think if you get, yeah. if you, you know, don't pretend. Be Whatever yourself. it is. Yeah, just be yourself. And if, if yourself is filled with a lot of books in the head. You I mean, it helps, you know, if you've got some <laughs> new fresh ideas and it's better than, you know, talking. You've got to be careful who you're talking to. It all what rubs off. It rubs off, you know, if you, the, oh, you're okay. like people, is a cliche that you're known by the company you keep. Yeah. You're an like average if, of the five people around you. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you be careful. Maybe it's better off sometimes reading a book, I feel, than, <laughs> than you know, just hanging yeah. out for the sake of... Um, but maybe you're lucky you have five great, nice people yeah. around you then. Do you get a little bored in Bollywood sometimes? Uh, I get a little bit bored in, in Bombay because I can't go out much and that's nothing to do with celebrities. It's the climate and it's the fact that there's no park to feed the ducks in, you know, <laughs> like yeah. whatever. So we suffer on that level and, and it goes deep, you know. That means people are kind of addicted more to, um, you know, indoor social things. media and indoor things and, and become insular, don't even kind of really connect to each other sometimes. Uh, That's all, I mean, whatever, each to their own. But I'm saying, for me, um, this business of not being able to walk down the road, you know, maybe quiet beer in the pub in the evening, or it's a little less social. So I Mm. I kind of get a bit bored and then I might be minorly, you know, self-destructive as in I have a couple of drinks in order to kind of just- A couple's okay, man. Yeah, it's okay. But you know, I just notice that it's happening a bit because of boredom. (laughs) <laughs> which is that's well, how you it should, is you should get into podcasts maybe oh, and you should yeah get be into more YouTube. creative or just act in films more, <laughs> more. <laughs> no so I mean uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in a deep teetotaler thing yeah. in my life yeah. I don't have any intoxicant yeah. and wow. podcasts and yeah. YouTube stimulants in yeah. terms of informative videos help me a lot that's so great. I see I see a lot of myself in you that's if I can lovely. say that yeah. uh, that's one thing secondly I want to ask you about the last 10 years like yeah. before Sacred Games happened yeah. um, do you kind of feel like you know, you were in some kind of a difficult phase in life. Like, you know, when you're talking about bad patches. Wait, I've never really, you know, I, I had a friend of mine um, come and spend my wife's birthday with us in England recently. And he was really like so comfortable and he looked like he was, you know, Lord so-and-so. And he's he's not really, I mean, he's, but he looked like he was really flamboyant and comfortable and happy. But I'm I've always been a little even though I'm really privileged compared to a lot of people, um, I, I, I feel it could all end, you know? So I have a, a very strong sense of... <laughs> Zen? Yeah, and doom I could, oh, okay. could descend at any moment. So I'm really not that comfortable and I haven't really ever been. Okay. Even when the success was on? No, even when the success was on, you're like, okay, this is a phase. And so perhaps it's because of understanding a little bit about history hmm. that, and I'm also quite into mythology and the Greek myths and the Indian myths and all this yeah. kind of stuff. So you're aware that the gods are watching, you know, so yeah. you shouldn't be too... Um, Arrogant? Yeah, hubris yeah. and all that. So, so um, yeah, it was tough. I mean, there are times, but luckily I think I've always had, it depends what your sights are. If you want to be, you know, the greatest, most successful actor in Bombay, then, you know, you'll probably constantly be disappointed. But And constantly working? And constantly working. Yeah. So I, that balance, even my wife has that balance is important. That, uh, But I... I I've always had a fairly steady and and interesting job, no matter what, over the last 10 years, including Sacred Games. So every year, the content's been changing, getting better. If you asked me, 
are you happy being an actor? And it was still 1995 and we're still making the same kind of movies. Mm. You know, maybe not. But luckily there's been like a growth. A shift. Yeah. W what's been like the worst moment of your life? The worst moment of my life. Um, I God, I don't know. There's been some run-ins with the law. There's been some, you know. No, but on an emotional level. The fan. Um, you know, my father died. That wasn't, that wasn't very nice. What did it teach um, you? Um, well, that all this is going to end in a hospital room with tubes in you. God that, knows when. Does that trouble you? It doesn't trouble me, but it makes me aware, you know, and I think about it and I, I just say, okay, so that's where I, I don't understand people who never think about it. I think everything is actually driven by, uh, by the fact that we're going to die, you know, whether we understand yeah. it or not. Yeah. Um, that's why we like things or, or not like things. That's what it all boils down to. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you're getting like... That's why art is great. Yeah. Because it's like um, um, you're capturing a moment in, in film or in... Or in um, thought. Thought or you like even a painting or whatever. Yeah. You're like freezing time and saying... It's kind of defying... It's defying the oblivion yeah. of, of time, right? Yeah, of death. Yeah. By saying, okay, I'll do something that will maybe last. Is that That's your driving why, force as an actor? Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, for myself. I mean, I actually, the only thing that's driven me as an actor, which I think is the same, is to uh, do, do a film that I can sit down at two in the morning and watch myself, you know, and say, yeah, that's really great, I did that. And I, I honestly, I think Lal Kaptan's one of those. I mean, Sacred Games is one of those. Um, I don't know about so many. You, do, there do, are a few. Yeah. You know, with Lal Kaptan and Sacred yeah, Games, yeah. there's slightly more gritty and all that. Yes. Is that because you've become slightly more gritty in your own life? Definitely. I've also grown. I mean, a role like this, I mean, I, actually the sound recorders told me, you're not sounding like the guy on day two. <laughs> you know, so I wow. had to go and work on it. And I had a lot of time in Rajasthan alone. And yeah. I, I spent a lot of time alone just thinking, thinking that this guy is like a, like a, so they were like, oh, it's like Clint Eastwood. My yeah. director said, and I said, no, no, he's not like Clint Eastwood. It's, he's like a wolf. Mm. You know, Clint Eastwood is really cool and laid back. Mm. This guy is more Out there. feral and more wild like yeah. this thing. So he's got that, um, you know, so all that. How do you find that and get into that? So f it's not just me. It's also the films have, have become like that. People are writing more interesting stuff, you know. What's age taught you? Well, I, I think uh, age has taught me humility and also appreciation of so many things. And you, I think you slow down a little bit and you're a little less arrogant like I was saying and you um, um, just you know a little more understanding of of things around also the thing you said about being slightly stressed all the time where you don't know when success will last and when your bad phase yeah. will start yeah has that reduced with age because that happens to all of us man well I mean I you know if you're lucky you're kind of in a decent place with friends and family and actually um, I've learned the kind of life I've had and upbringing I've had. Like, you know, you don't need so much money. I mean, after a point, you see guys just being silly with, you know, with money. I mean, of course, there's no end. You can what's have, money taught you? What's money taught me? Having I, not not very much, <laughs> not very much. I when, mean, when did you realize that you're privileged in life? Um, I think it's, I was privileged in terms of education. In yeah. terms, there are many things that can priv you know make you feel privileged yeah. beyond money, like. An education can make is a great privilege, which I, I really didn't think was a privilege when yeah. it was happening. Yeah. Um, but it is. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you, if like my driver had gone to that school, maybe he would be like CEO of, you know, Britannia. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So that that kind of thing is like crazy to think about. I also feel your education has kind of played a role in your film choices right now. Like something like Lal Kaptan. Yeah, of course. I mean, in everything, in yeah, everything yeah. you do, you're colored by that kind of thing. Your value system, and particularly. You know, some of these schools yeah. can really teach you about the important things in life. Also, as they say, you become more woke through a great education. So woke is like you become more aware. You get right. a better 360 degree view. What have you learned from fame? Um, but I'm not really a fan of fame. I, I don't think it's... You don't uh, enjoy it? No, I don't think it's useful at all. I think it's in fact quite a hindrance and it's quite, quite annoying. Unfortunately, in India, sometimes you have to be someone special in order to get things done normally. Hmm. Like if you you know, just want to get things done. Normally, you, it helps if yeah. you're somebody, which is a little sad. But also, let me let me tell you that you've inspired a lot of guys who are like around my age yeah. to just be classy, be charming, be resilient. Wow. So Thanks, that's sir. that's an outcome of your fame. Well, okay. I mean, oh, if you do something and you spread the word, then that's nice. I mean, for me personally, I'd rather, you know, go to Goa and walk around without being 
necessarily recognized. I love being an actor. Do you miss that? Well, you know, there's places I can go where it's fine. You just, you know, your hangouts change. Yeah. But um, I think money can give you a lot of um, things that you fame think fame can. No, fa- I mean, you know, you're like, I mean, there's some, let's say you're Mr. Ambani or something. I mean, you don't need to be famous. Mm. I mean, you have the world at your feet. So money can also do that. Fame is in fact a hindrance to, to getting things done. Does it know. take away from your peace? Uh, I'm sure a little bit, but what it gives you is way, way, better. way more. I mean, it's not peace is the most important thing. Yeah. So it doesn't take away your peace. Yeah. What's, I mean, what's your advice? You like? shouldn't look for peace on Chopati <laughs> if you're famous. <laughs> yeah. You should what, look for it somewhere else. With Sara's career like coming up right now, she yeah. like you know she's becoming super famous. What's yeah. your advice to her? Like both in terms of fame and in terms of career. You know, after a point, I mean, things change and outlooks change. I mean. There's not so much advice, really. Uh, she, you know, she's got her head screwed on pretty straight. So, I mean, I just say, um, the last time we had a chat about this was to be as as original and just to be herself, you know? Mm. And also to enjoy the work and enjoy acting and to think like a actor rather yeah. than than be too focused on wanting to be a star. Was competition ever a big part of your life? like a big part of your mind and your existence, especially early 2000s, you know? Yeah, it kind of was. I mean, competition was important and, and it was a big part of my life. But I realized once when, you know, when um, dear old Sanjay Dutt went to jail, um, he didn't help me much. So I realized that wishing ill on your, on your you know, peers. peers doesn't help you. The only thing that can really help you is is you doing better. Yeah. Improving yourself. Yeah. Competing with yourself. Yeah, competing with yourself, really, it sounds a bit boring, but that's the best competition. Because they're called stars, right? We're called stars, meaning there's a galaxy of stars. You're not called something that there's only one of. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that means that everyone is appreciated for having their own way of doing things. Like as an actor, you like different people because the same scene can be done so differently by different guys yeah, yeah and that difference is what makes it interesting yeah. sorry so yeah so what? Seth so you know when I talk to you there's so many layers of like intellect mm, I uh, want you to give your top three book recommendations yeah. and then your top three learning recommendations okay, well, what do you do to learn look, what, uh, top three books would be I think The Fountainhead by Anne Rand um, I really like P.G. Woodhouse and the Jeeves and Wooster stories they're really funny and any collection of ghost stories by M. R. James. What does it add to your mind? Well, there's an amazing atmosphere. And right, reading, if you're reading something you're interested in, there's a whole process that happens. There's a connection to the words that are used, the mental images that are evoked in your mind. There's kind of like a interaction between the brain and the page hmm. that is just, I think, uh, keeps the brain really interestingly engaged and keeps your imagination. It's like a imaginative workout. Stimulant. Yeah. And it's... Uh, and so... I mean, you know, cheaper than making a movie, uh, you can get an insight into a different world. And, and great writers and good writers with language hmm. can just create a certain rhythm and a certain kind of style. Yeah. You know, like Emma, I mean, Henry James, for example, and, and all these the great writers. Yeah. They co- I mean, the classics. Yeah. These guys are unbelievable in terms of the atmosphere that they can just create. 100%. Like Charles Dickens, for yeah. example. I mean, you know, and just outstanding. Yeah. Like like today, like, at, you know, you're almost 50. So mm. how do you stimulate yourself mentally now? Oh, there's so many things. I mean, the, you're still being offered really interesting uh, roles. So films and, and work um, is a main part of it, like, uh, you know, planning that. And then also, you know, uh, planning a nice holiday with friends and, and celebrating life in the right way with family and like, you know, great bottle of wine yeah. um, and looking forward to, I think, balancing like a patch of hard work followed by a kind of a cele- celebration with kind of usually food and drink uh-huh. of some sort. Yeah. So you, you're you really good and you deny yourself yeah. and then you indulge. Yeah. And you, so it's you, that kind of When balance. you're doing something like Lal Kaptan, which is so dark, yeah. are you bringing the darkness from inside yourself? It's not, it's not even, it's not really dark. It's like heavy and there yeah. is kind of like an animal there and you have to find that somewhere. Yeah. And once you find it, I think you change. That's why it person. stimulates you? Yeah, in a sense. And But I came back from that outdoor, slightly different person. People were looking at me like, you look different. <laughs> because 
you know, um, you can change if yeah. you keep doing things like this somewhere. Do your movies stay with you forever? I don't know, I guess partially, but you know, they were always there. It's just, you know, they're, they're in your blood, so yeah. you just have to magnify certain, um, but some things stay. Depends how long you do it, yeah. you know? Why, why should a young person go watch this film? Because it's a, it's a, it's a cool revenge drama. That's why, that's, the, that's why you should go and see any film, is because yeah. it's entertaining to watch, as in, you know, it's like a really nice story. But this is a unique film. There's been no film that kind of captures, um, it's, it's like a proper cinematic experience. You yeah. see it on big screen. Today, everyone's making CG movies and every kind of battle sequence looks the same with these, you know, crowd multiplication techniques and people also warping history and I don't know what's going on. I mean, of course, it'd be an interesting movie somewhere. Yeah. But this is like, um, like an Indian superhero Got it. Uh, set in a very real time, yeah. which William Dalrymple's just written a book called The Anarchy. So you could almost call it like, th it was set in the Badlands during, <laughs> during the Anarchy, on the cursed earth, like yeah. Judge Dredd. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. So yeah. again, a mental stimulant. It's kind of a mental stimulant. Well, hopefully, I mean, it's, uh, the effort made by the cinematographers and the director to go to these forts and these locations in India, yeah. where, you know, they've been dead for hundreds of years and to come alive on screen again is quite fascinating. Yeah. Okay, Seth, and my last segment of this podcast yeah. for you yeah. is uh, something I can only ask you because I feel like I can have that conversation with you at this level. Right. Um, what do actors do with their money? So you make money through a film or whatever, and then what yeah. do you do? You invest it or you, do you take well, care I, of this the is a, it's, a, it's a good question. I don't know what actors do, but I know a lot of people what don't... What do you do? Don't, okay, I'll tell you. I, I, I spend it. I save <laughs> some of it. I mean, there's always a thought that, you know, it'll all end tomorrow, like I told you. Do you, you know? think about money and losing money? Um... You know, I tell you something. This that guy just fell over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that frightens me and it worries me, but doesn't completely surprise me because I think that can happen to any of us at any time. So I spend more than half of it, and in case I don't fall over tomorrow, I keep some of it and I invest it and I look after it um, to kind of keep things going. And uh, and money cannot be enjoyed without a certain amount of culture. That hmm. much I can tell you. What do you mean? Can you elaborate? Yeah. Uh, like if you've got cash, I mean, how do you how do you try, how to convert that into enjoyment? That conduit is is the, is culture because whether it's listening to the music, whether it's like you know having an, a nice drink of something good, um, or you know going somewhere interesting or watching something, or engaging the senses somehow. Mm. Um, you know, Money's the, no good in the bank, basically. Like you need to. I mean, it might it. give you a sense of security, and some people make the mistake because of the environment they live in. Um, the most fun thing that they find to do is to make the money. That mm. feeling of making it is what they live on, which is not what I do. Yeah. Uh, so I really enjoy converting it into fun. Into experiences. Yes. Okay. And, uh, but in terms of your personal finances, do you invest in businesses? Do you well, you've got to balance it, right? I mean, you put it all in the Punjab National Bank, you'll be in trouble. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, across in India, across between property and, you know, um, certain very safe... Uh, stocks and shares and kind of banks that are boring on the interest but are solid. Yeah. Uh, so things like that. Not, I wouldn't get too adventurous with uh, with the markets either. So, I mean, one hopes the economy will do well, but, you know, we never know. Diversity in investment. Okay, yeah. got it. Beautiful. Uh, and you learned that over time? It's kind of common sense. I mean, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket is what you're taught when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. Again, reading. <laughs> yeah. You read about personal finance and all that as well? A little bit, but this is more moral of the story. What is that story that says don't put all your eggs in one basket? It's like a Jakarta tale or one of those uh, co comics you read when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone knows the moral. Yeah. Um, not as an actor, not as someone from the Indian film industry, but could you give a young 22-year-old, 23-year-old human some career advice? Well, if you, if you, you know, I think you've got to find your vocation. You got to find what really is called a vocation is from Latin. Um, so it's like a voice that speaks to you, that tells you this is where you should be. A lot of people are in the wrong job. So mm. if you find the right job for yourself um, and hopefully you really love it, you know, um, you have to love it. Yeah. And, and it's all changing now. 
I don't know. I mean, those classic jobs like doctor and lawyer, yeah. and, and there's so many things. Now you, have, you can be a YouTuber or a podcast. Yeah, so follow <laughs> your heart. As long as if you're passionate about it, you yeah. might be good at it. Yeah. And on an emotional level, what's your advice on a human level? Um, to people? Yeah. About relationships or whatever. Gosh, so many things to say that I've learned. I mean, I learned from me. I mean, you can go for it all. No, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, the idea is to try and be kind and to be nice to each other, of course, and you know, read about Jesus and <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah, it was a wonderful outlook to life. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many things. I, I mean, I don't want to sound like a, like I'm preaching, but just but, be a nice person. I mean, that's so easy to say. Don't but yeah, just make sure you sleep well at night. Got it. You know, without I, I, guilt. Yeah, try if you keep yourself guilt free. Okay, I'll tell you what. It's slightly deeper. Um, if you like Shakespeare, if, all you have to ever read really is Shakespeare and Milton. So Shakespeare in in Hamlet, Polonius's speech where he tells his son who is leaving and going somewhere, gives him some advice. So you just read Polonius's speech to his son and just follow that. The last few lines of it are, and above all else, to thine own self be true. Hmm. So be true to yourself. For then, as sure as night follows day, you cannot be false to anyone else. Beautiful. Okay, so that I think is good advice from father Beautiful. to son. Saif Ali Khan, thank you so yeah. much, man. Cheers. Learned a lot from you, yeah, learned yeah. a lot from this particular conversation. Uh, if you could ask everyone to subscribe to Beer Biceps, it okay. would make my day. Hi, this is Saif Ali Khan, and please subscribe to Bear Biceps. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Saif. All right. Pleasure.